I will start by making a brief introduction of uh, our uh, guest today, our honor, honorable guest today, no? and, um, and also later on I will uh, start off with some questions and I will then uh, uh, you know, invite um, Gustavo to show us and talk a little bit about his work and his experience and then you can also contribute to this dialogue with your own questions and comments. Uh, Gustavo Salmerón is a renowned Spanish actor, screenwriter, producer, and director from Madrid. He began his acting career in 1993, and uh, over the next three decades, he started. Uh, he has starred in over 30 films, uh, TV series, and has worked uh, with well-known actors and directors. So we are very honored to have him today here. Uh, his career as a filmmaker started in 2001 with the short Desaliñadas. Uh, it is an award-winning uh, uh, short which has been translated into English as Salad Days. Uh, it won numerous prizes, including the, um, the, prize, um, the best prize, uh, the Gold Plague at the Chicago International Film Festival, um, uh, a Los Angeles International Film Festival, and also the best short award at the Goya uh, Film, I mean, at the Goya Awards, which are like the Spanish Oscars, and are given by the Spanish uh, Academy of Cinema and Arts. No? And then uh, immediately afterwards, in 2002, he started shooting the uh, documentary, also an award-winning documentary, which he has been shooting for 14 years. And uh, it also won uh, a major award, the Goya, the Goya Award for uh, um, Best uh, Documentary. And it has uh, a number of other awards, like um, the um, Spotlight Award at the Cinema I Honors, uh, a documentary festival in New York, the Crystal Globe to the Best Documentary at the Karlovy Vary Festival in the Czech Republic. And uh, so it has also been selected to important festivals such as the Toronto International Film Festival, a major film festival, and the San Sebastian Film Festival, also a Class A festival. And it is now competing at the Hong Kong International Film Festival. And uh, in a few days, we will know the, the outcome. No, it's competing, eight documentaries are competing for the Best Documentary Award. So uh, we wish him uh, a lot of luck. And we would like to uh, you know, welcome him with a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's, a, it's an honor to be here today and to talk. I don't know if I'm going to say something interesting or not. And if I cannot say something in English, I have a here. Uh, she will try to help me with the English in case that. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for the introduction. And well, um, we can start talking about, I guess you are interested in films, in movies, so I don't know much about uh, other things, but about films I, I know a little bit more. And, uh, well, we can start talking and then we can have questions, so. Okay, let me just start off with, uh, with a difficult question. I was, uh, before discussing with uh, Gustavo, how in the, you know, in some posters and the DVD covers, he appears with a camera filming the subject, in this case the protagonist, his mother, and then also sometimes in a DVD cover, he even appears facing the audience. So it's a very interesting picture, which for me highlights the construction, the fact that the documentaries that you produce are like a construction rather than a reflection of reality, no? So the, the act of filming is so present in your work, and that, I think, is one of the most striking characteristics of your uh, documentary. That's the picture I, I meant, um, but it is not projected. Let me see if they can... But in any case, if you go to the internet, you will immediately see, yeah, now we can see that one, no? So it, for me, it, uh, it is a very symbolic. Uh, yeah. yeah. So could you comment on that? Yeah, sure. Uh, you can see at the, at the screen, 
This is a picture that I, this is, a, this is the poster of the, of the film. And I, we took the, the picture like 12 years ago. So when I was uh, going to finish the, the, the shooting 12 years ago, I was shooting for two years, and then I, I call a friend of mine who is a photographer and say, come to the castle where we shoot the film that we're gonna make the poster of the film because in three, four months I will finish the, the editing. I took 10 years more to finish the film. <laughs> so it was, I was kind of a stupid at that moment thinking that I was finishing the, the, the film. And that's that's the that's the poster, no? That's a yes. The the presence of the director is all the time, or many times in the film. Um, I'm the director, and uh, it's because the film is about my mother, my family. So um, uh, I don't want to be that much on the film, but I I have to because. Uh, the film is many things in one film. It's a documentary, but also it's like a comedy. And also it's like a portrait of a family and a portrait of a, a woman and a portrait of Spain, you could say that, no? So there are many things uh, working together. But also it's a search for the vertebra of my great-grandmother. Mm -hmm. So that it was, it was lost for many, many years in my parents' house. And it's my search. So that, that was, that, that's why I have to be on the film. And also it's, it's like, um, it's a search of myself through my family. Because you know, families are very tough sometimes to you know, to handle your own family. It's like, mm. sometimes you are with your own family and you don't feel very comfortable. It's like, something is like, because you really, many times you really don't know who, who they are because all of us, we play a character in real life. We play a character with our own family, with friends, with society, with teachers, with, so, um, it's, it's funny, but it's the way it is that sometimes you really don't know your family. So I recommend all of you to record your own family just for do the exercise, to take a camera. The good thing about today's world uh, for cinema is that with a cell phone, a, a camera like that Panasonic G4 that is 1,000 or it, well, now it's cheaper, uh, it's, it's ten thousand dollars or eight thousand dollars. It's a very cheap camera. You can you can make a really good quality film. So record your own family because maybe you have a a mother that is very funny telling stories, or your father, or your great grandmother, or your aunt, uncle. So when you record your own family, then when you see them at the editing room, at the big screen, you are going to realize that are different than what you thought. And maybe that things that you thought they were not so funny or that you didn't like, they appears in a different way. So it's like, a, it's like going to the therapist through the video, you know? It's like, it's some kind of like going to the therapist. For me, it was like that, shooting for 14 years to my own family. I don't know how I did it, actually, but. Yeah, it must be very, very difficult. Uh, well, I have questions related to the, um, you know, to the length of your shooting, because, um, but before I ask that, regarding this, uh, this bong that you are searching for, I think it is a fantastic uh, way of creating suspense of building a narrative thread as well, no? So if we want to leave it, because sometimes the film feels a little bit like a collage, but does this search for the bong 
provides like a thread, a very clear thread, no? And uh, yes, it's like a, it's like a mag, how do you say MacGuffin? MacGuffin, MacGuffin. It's like a MacGuffin <laughs> yeah. in the story, you know. Yeah. So um, is something that drives you to the whole story. My need to look for that bone, because my mom was cutting bones of pig, pig bones <laughs> to make a soup. And suddenly she took one bone, one vertebra, vertebra, and she said like, I have a vertebra like this one of my grandmother. Well, I was shooting, I was recording that. And I said, what? And she said, yes, yeah, I don't know where it is, but my great grandmother uh, gave it to my grandma, to my mother, and my mother, my mother gave it to me. So I, I said, where it is? So we start looking for the vertebra, but the vertebra, did, it was lost. So I was looking for 10 years for the vertebra. And sometimes as much stupid is the, the plot or the thing, like the, the main theme of the, of the film, the starter of the film, is gonna be more funny. I don't know if it sounds, you understand what I mean, but I think you have to believe in your stupidity, in your own stupid ideas, um, because to make comedy uh, or no comedy, um, I think it's important to, to discover your own idiot. Like the great, great comedians like Charles Chaplin, Buster Keaton, Marx Brothers, or many others, mother also, they realized they found the really, inner yeah, the, the inner, inner idiot. idiot that is inside of them. And then when you realize wh which one is your idiot, then you put it on, <laughs> um, I don't know if I'm explaining it the right way, but Actually, I think you understand. Uh, along this line, I remember uh, how surprised I was when I saw the, the short, The Salinadas, when I, uh, you suddenly introduce like, they are all dressed as lettuces and as fishes and so on, and it, look, it looks plastic, artificial. And then you introduce the video like a, a medical video, right? When it goes in, into, the camera goes into the, and I thought, wow, it's so risky, right? It is, it is really risky to do that, because you are like in other visual uh, atmosphere, and suddenly you are using like a doctor's camera to go inside and is, you think, it's amazing. I mean, you have to, in a way, to be, you know, to, to exercise that uh, creativity that you are. Uh, yeah, actually, it was my brother throw. <laughs> 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 you know, yeah, because uh, we need to record like a throw and a stomach of someone. So I went to a big hospital in Spain, a very big hospital. And I talked to the to the main doctor with endosco endoscopes, endoscopy. endoscopy, and I told him I need that for a movie, and he told me, okay, uh, we can shoot that. Okay, so I went with him, but um, it was funny because they put me a a, a rope, uh, Navata, a rope, a rope, a rope, a white rope like a doctor. So I was telling the and it was an old lady who was there lying down. She didn't know anything because she was she was she went there for for a endoscopy, but she didn't know I was I was shooting her for the movie. <laughs> I was it was very tricky. So no, because I mean, how how can she know that it's her own? You know what I mean? How how can she know it's her own body inside of her? It's like, so I was do, uh, giving directions like, no, slower, and, and I was very young at that time. So maybe they thought, or she thought, wow, this, this, this kid, you know, he's, he's the master, he's a, a genius. He knows how to do this better than the, the main doctor of the, you know? <laughs> so, but we couldn't finish the way I wanted, and I, and I felt 
like, sorry for that lady that we were like going down and up, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> in and out with the endoscopy. So I asked my brother to do it and, and we did it. Do you want to see the scene or what? Yes, it will be. I mean, <laughs> I mean it's, I it's think, disgusting, actually. But I think... <laughs> So this is like, this is how, again, the stupid the stupidity of, like, to have an idea about a love story between a fish and a salad who fall in love in the fridge of a restaurant. They, they met and they fall in love and they believe in this community of, of uh, food that if, if they are eaten, um, at the, uh, if they are eaten, they, they go to eternal life, you know? Because they form part of the body of the person who is eating them. Yeah, so if, if they are in love to food to, and they, they are eaten together, they're gonna be part of that body for eternal love. So that's what they think. But she's afraid of, she's afraid of someone eating her. But the, the idea is, when I, I was telling the producers and people the idea, everybody said like, but what, the, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, don't, like everybody was like, like telling like, but how are you gonna do that? You're gonna do like cartoons, like like. I said, no, 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 real actors, real actors. No way, you cannot do that. So at the end, there is something that uh, I think you have to believe in, even if it's a stupid idea. You have, if you work very hard in on that stupid idea for many years, at the end you can make a good film. I think. At least this film, it won so many awards in the US, in Europe, in Korea, in so many different, um, so it was very, very success, this film. So uh, it's because every person, if it's a documentary, every idea can be a good idea if you know, if you find a universal, a theme that que conecte con todo el mundo. Basically, a theme that connects to everybody. So that's that's the theme because everybody can have a good idea. You know that. I mean, you you know every, you know you have great ideas. I'm sure you all of you have uh, good ideas to make a film. And you know a friend of you that he has always good ideas. The difficult thing is to to connect with the people, you know, to, to make it work. So, and that's only about work. So, we're gonna put the endoscopy. <laughs> that is disgusting, but. So, why, why we were talking about the endoscopy? I don't remember. Well, because Ah. So realistic, not so physical, and at the beginning you're addressing people with the letters, it, it looks like a, a carnival, no? It looks like a... Yes, because uh, there is this, you remember like like these films that is, it's like in a way it's like to, Toy Story, but with vegetables, you know? <laughs> like uh, when they are alone, they, ha they, they, they have a community and they talk and they become alive. And when the humans are not seeing them, you know, like, so um, and it needs to have that, that part. But th this, this film, it was made long time ago and I didn't have the budget or the, the it, um, at that time th there was not many computer, um, 3D and all that. Uh, uh, yes, not not all, not all the um, special, effects. special effects that you have now, but it works. 
you know, it works. It, it is the way it is, so. Yeah, that's what you said, no? That you have to risk, you have to take risks. Yes, yeah. always as closest to a risky thing you are, uh, better it's gonna be. But the problem is that maybe you are, you go to the dark side, <laughs> like, um, but if you don't take risks, there is nothing, it's not gonna be interesting, never. I mean, you have always to take risks. And um, so. Yeah, I also see, I mean, in, in a way you break the conventions, right? Because one doesn't expect, having seen the first part of the film, the, I mean, most of this short, you don't expect that endoscopy. And in the same way, in the feature documentary, you know, the lots of kids, uh, one monkey and a castle and a monkey, no? Or how was it? Um, lots, lots of, of kids, kids, a monkey, monkey and, and a castle. castle. And uh, you also, in a way, you know, it makes me think with so much humor that we have in that uh, documentary, you know, in a way you're also breaking, when I go to see a documentary about a woman, I don't expect to be laughing throughout, you no? Know? Uh, so in a way, you also surprise us immensely with that with that documentary, no? Yes, I, 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 me as an actor, I, I've been working for many years, and I discover that many times directors they get you very tight, too tight. They don't give you freedom, you know, because they know exactly what they want. And sometimes it's good because they are great directors, but sometimes they are not as good. But even if they are great directors, if you have a good uh, actor in front of you, a good actress, uh, I don't understand why they don't, why directors, they don't let them to express and to, to be themselves at least once. So like, show me what you can, tell me what, what you can do, you know? So, uh, in this film, in this other film, there are lots of kids, a monkey and a castle, the main actress was my mother. So imagine, you know, like, uh, what can you say to your mother, like, don't do that, you know? So I let her free, completely free, and to all my family to, to stay the way they want. To, to, because sometimes to direct, it's not just to say things. It's not to, to, to have everything very clear. I think it's more about um, facilitar. To facilitate. To, to facilitate. Yes. To um, crear un caldo de cultivo <laughs> apropiado <laughs> para la creación. Right, we basically create the right atmosphere, the right environment for creativity to come out. It's como, um, every decision you take, the costumes, the how it's gonna be the light, how it's going to be, every decision that a director takes before, when the actor arrives to the set, even if you don't tell him anything, he's gonna feel something that is at the, at the atmosphere. So, so I think it's about that, more about saying too many things. And of course you have to answer so many questions, you have to take many decisions, but uh, I was telling this because the question, um, because about my mother, suddenly my mother, she starts, she starts in the film, she starts to talk about the film, about how you're supposed to make a film. Like, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't do that. And I let her to talk. And I asked all my family, how do you think we should make the film? So it's on the film. So it's very funny. Or it's, it's something that, um, well, let's see apart. You'd like to show this one? Especially when you're watching a film and suddenly the main character. In this film, I decided to um, use a very bad camera, the worst camera ever, a mini DV camera. That at that time, it was good, but now it's like even worse than a cell phone, you know? It's like, so really bad quality, but I like it that way. So it's like home video, 
you know? Mm -hmm. Because now the home videos looks too beautiful. But uh, before the home videos have this, this quality that I like it for, for this film. So. And this was also the reason, was this the reason why the videos like archival footage from when you were small and the more contemporary footage doesn't look so different? Yes, because uh, there is some footage from super eight millimeter film from the 70s. Let's see this thing when she starts to, do, to say that. So this is the first moment that she, she's like saying, there is, there is the first, let's say that there is a, something that it works very good in comedy and in drama as well. When one character wants to do something and another character doesn't want, there is an opposite force that choke and crash. Collide. Yes. Or crash into each other. Y entonces, ella no quiere hacer la película, yo quiero hacer la película. So she doesn't want to make the film and I want to make the film. So um, that's, that's a moment that, that is when it's, this is the minute five for the film. Mm -hmm. I think now we could open the floor for questions and, and comments from the audience. Actually, I have a question for you. Okay. Um, my question is, did it take a lot of convincing your mother to do this film? Because she's an absolute natural. She, she's like a, a movie actress without even trying. Yeah. Um, she, well, I mean, she didn't, she didn't thought that it was going to be so big success. Uh -huh. So she thought that it was you know, sometimes the, the mothers, because they want the kids to be around the, the son, uh, even if the son is like doing some with a mini DV camera, shooting the mother like with, you know, like a, not, it's not a kid anymore, but he's, just, you know, so, because they want the kids to be around, mm -hmm. so, she, she will let me to do whatever. Okay. But now, then she realized that it was true, that I, the years pass and one more year and one more year and 14 years shooting. And there was one moment that they start to be very worried. Like, what is he doing? He gets, he's crazy. I mean, he's shooting us for 14 years. He, and, and he's shooting with a, a small video camera because they are not stupid. They know how, they know it's a, the, I mean, it's like something that is not going to work. So, uh, but no, she loves, she's like an actress that, it's a very important thing for an actress to be a little bit narcissist. Narcissistic. Narcissistic. It's important, but just a little bit. If you are a little bit more, you are gonna be a bad actor. But you have to be a little bit of that. So that's mean that you like people watching you, but watching you when you are doing a character. So she plays a character, it's, it's herself, but as I was telling you before, we all of, we, all of us, we need, we, we, create a character, usually is in the... Adolescencia? Adolescence. In the adolescence, when we are teenagers, we, we create like different characters, or even before, to protect our, ourselves from the world. So, um, she's doing like a character, because she knows we are shooting, but it's herself too. So, and... Um, she has that. She has. She likes people watching her. So it's, it's a good thing. So it's very important if you are making a documentary. If you want to make a documentary about your, any character, the first thing you have to ask yourself is: Is that character really interesting? Uh, Siente empatía al público por ella. Does the public feel empathy? 
uh, it has something, a way of telling stories, or is funny, or is uh, something that is, you really want to continue watching that person. So that's important. That's why the big studios, they want big stars, because it's like Marilyn Monroe. It's like you cannot, you, you have to watch, you, you want to watch her all the time, all the big stars. Not only because it's beautiful, it's because there is something else underneath that you, you need to, there is something that, that is interesting in that character. So, in that human being, no? So, it's important to ask yourself when you are making a film, even if it's a fiction or, or documentary, if your main character is that has that potential, you know? So, um, so yes, see, it was very easy to convince, yeah. Okay. How many of you have watched the film? Any okay. other questions? Um, any other questions or comments? I can show you the first scene. She has this obsession with, with death. So I, I wanted to put the first scene. Always the first scene of a movie has to have the tone, no? The tone, the tone, no? Yeah, it sets the tone. The tone of, of the film, mm -hmm. no? As soon as you present the audience the tone, better. So uh, the tone of the film is that you know that it's going to be like funny and it's going to have this obsession and it's going to, uh, you know, the main character very soon, as soon you know the, the main character better. And also the, the film finish with her in the bed. So. Some uh, writers, script writers, they call it uh, sujeta libros, like a holder. Oh, like book holding. Book holding. You know, like you put in books and it holds from. So, like bookends. You have two bookends the one that signals the beginning of the film at, in bed, and then the one at the end back in bed. Yeah, and that's the thing that it works very good in comedy to have the first scene and the last scene uh, in the same location and with the same character, even with the same situation. Because uh, the, something good in comedy is that the characters, they have to, of course, they have to have this idiot part that I, I said before, but they have to learn something. They have to progress. The, the, the dramatic arch has to go in, in, a, in a usual drama, has to go like that. But in a comedy, they have to go like this. They have to grow, but very little. You know what I mean? Tienen que, los personajes tienen que, que evolucionar, mm -hmm. pero muy poquito. So in, in comedy, the characters have to evolve, but very little. So there's not a big evolution. There's not a big change from beginning to end. It's, it's kind of like a flat line. It's more funny, you know? If they, they are working hard, to do something during the whole film, but at the end, it looks like, well, they realize something, they suffer, and they learn something, but they learn, but very little. So it's more funny, you know? So uh, that's what is in the film, too. You know, that little progress. Do you have any further comments or questions? Or? Uh, muchas gracias. <laughs> and may I ask some questions about the short film, yeah. the Samyada? Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm, ca I'm kind of confused. Uh, uh, how do you have this inspiration to do this film? And I want to know, uh, could you make some comments about uh, the Salad sister, the way the Salad sister died and he and her brother? Her, uh, that chose to dry and die naturally. Uh, you saw the Compare, film, no? Yeah. You saw it? Yeah. Okay. Do uh, you have some comments? Why do you, I think there may be something, in, it's about your choice to choose the way you die so it will become meaningful. Yeah. <laughs> it's my comment. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, sometimes, yeah, um, 
I think in every community, when, because this is a community of, of food, that they believe in something, no? And always you have to have one, at least one character who doesn't believe in that thing. You have to have a per per perspective, perspective um, look, you know, like uh, un emergente, uh, like a... Emergente? An emergence. Sí, como a character who... Um, yes, like... Um, so basically somebody who doesn't follow the rules. So, um, and um, the idea, the idea came because um, I play in, in theater. It was not really theater. It was like some kind of, um, let's say, cabaret. Uh, a character who was a salad. So, because in that place, uh, the audience, they throw tom tomatoes if they don't like the soul. It's a theater in Spain, very well known, that uh, when you come into the theater, they give you a tomato, one tomato, you know? And, every, and ev everyone from the audience can go to the stage and sing or tell a story or a joke, whatever. If the audience like it, they, they clap you. If they don't like you, they throw you a, tom a tomato. It's really, it's really tough, let me tell you, because the tomato, they throw tomatoes very hard. <laughs> some, people, some people get really, it's painful, it's really painful. And I, I, was, I was there many, many times. So um, one day, it's called uh, Sala Mirador in Madrid. It's called La Catarsis del Tomatazo. That means... <laughs> the catharsis of the tomato hit. The catharsis of the tomato heat. So, um, uh, and you have to, you, have, you are afraid of, like, when you go to a stage, you are afraid. You are nervous, you are afraid. But this is to, uh, uh, double. It's, a, it's, it's a, a double. It's a double threat. Because you are afraid of the tomato, tomatoes, you know? So I decided one day to, to cover myself with something. So I cover myself with, with I, I, I play a salad, you know? Um, because I, uh, <laughs> it was stupid. We wanted everybody to throw us tomato to us. So I played with a friend of mine, he was a doctor, and I was the salad. And my problem was that I have, uh, um, I was sick because I, I need vitamin E. So tomato has a lot of vitamin E. So. Uh, the thing was, yes, is that it was that that I played that character on this theater, and we decided to make it on the film, and at the end is not is completely different the story, but it comes from that, and yes, always the death is a theme that I am very interested on, so the 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 death death is very th cinematic, and um, the fear of death and about what is going to happen after death. And that's on the film. Oh, in a very naive way, because it's naive, but it's, it's that themes are on the film. Uh, well, uh, thank you, Gustavo, for, for the amazing film uh, of the castle and the monkey and the children. Um, well, I have a similar question to make you about this film, which is, uh, when was the first time you thought of making a movie about your mother? Did you fantasize for many years, maybe in your childhood, maybe I'm going to make a movie about my mother, or was something that uh, happened by, uh, it was a coincidence, so you, you just started filming and, oh, here I have a, a film. Well, it, it was, uh, it was, uh, it's true that since we were kids, every, every we were making films all the time. So um, there was something on the family that was very powerful because always there were a lot of freedom, a lot of theater, art, when at the 80s in Madrid, uh, it was very fun. 
So I always had that need to record that. And the real, the real thing why I start the film is stupid because uh, w my mom, she had a, a, a peak on the castle. It was a little peak, but the peak, and they play with the, with the kids, you know? And uh, it was, pigs are amazing. They are better than dogs. They are very intelligent. And the pigs, uh, the first year, the, the pigs was like the three, four months, it was like this big. And after one year, it was like eight kilograms. It was huge after one year. And after two years, the pigs was like 200 pounds, 200 kilograms. And after three years, it was too big to have it in your house, in, in the castle. So, and it was stupid because some part of the fans said, we cannot kill Lupita, her name was Lupita. <laughs> we cannot kill Lupita, it's our pet, you know? And I'm gonna show you now a little of the pig. So um, my mother one day said, okay, we are going to do the killing party of the pig. Like, long time ago when I was a little kid that I, after the war, um, the people in the little village, they get together, the families, and they, kill, they do the killing of the pig. <coughs> and it's like a party, no? And because my mother, she, al she always had this reminds of that time that before Christmas and, okay, so, I went there to, for the killing of the pig with a video camera to record for the family. And suddenly, when they cut the pig and my mother saw the fat of the pig, because my mother, as you can see, she's fat, right? <laughs> so she started to say, she started to talk about death, the death of the pig and her death in a very metaphysical way. But at the same time, very idiot way. <laughs> so, and then she started to talk about the fat of the pig, about her fat. So it was, and I recall all that. And then I, I, I went back to Madrid, and I do a little editing, like for a short film, and I realized that it was good. It was really good. I said, wow, this is, this is it's funny. It's, it's good, it's, it's something, underneath and I have to look for that. So I started recording for three years. About the, I decided to make a documentary about the story of Spain through the killing of a pig. And it was completely failure. It was uh, ter terrible. But that day, my mother took the vertebra of the pig, of one, another pig, and said, I have a vertebra like this one of my grandmother, and that was the film about. So that happened many times in documentary, that a director starts shooting something or someone, and suddenly the documentary is about the daughter or the mother or one or the, I don't know, the doctor of that person. Uh, it's like, I don't know if you saw that documentary, it's called Capturing the Friedmans. And that documentary, it was about clowns in New York City. The, the director wants to make a, a documentary about clowns. And suddenly he realized the most famous clown in New York City, who, who, who works with all the kids, you know, his father and brother was, were in jail because they were, how do you say, pedrasta? They were pedophiles. Pedophiles. So the film at the end is about them, you know? But many, things, many times happened that. You have to be open, because maybe life can show you a better way. Any other questions from the audience? Um, thank you for making the documentary. Um, uh, I have one question. Uh, during the economy crisis, did you ever thought of giving up shooting? Because um, even during, uh, because your mom has to sell the castle, right? And then you you were even filming yourself crying. So how, how can you continue film that during the situation? 
Yeah, that's a good question too. Mm -hmm. uh, it's again about the risk. You know, you have to take risks. So when, so the story is about uh, about a woman who has three wishes to have lots of kids, a monkey, and a castle, and she got the three things right. So I'm gonna make a spoiler. Sorry, but doesn't matter. So there's one moment of the film. She talks about the monkey, the kids, and there's one moment of the kids that the, the of the film that she lost the castle because of the econom economic crisis, um, and the bank took over, took over, no? Yes. The castle. Repossessed. Yeah. So there was a tough moment for the family, but. My brother called me saying that we have to go to the castle to remove because my mother won't. My mother, she's like a hoarder, you know? She keeps so many things. So there was one moment that she decided that all the kids, all the, the children, and we were going to the castle to do the moving, to move all the stuff of the castle. So I thought, why, why they a company, they can um, do it. Say, no, 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 we're going to do it ourselves because it's very expensive and it's better if we do it ourselves. So we were, all of us with trucks, with uh, trucks to do the, the moving of the castle. So when my, bro my brother said, um, we're going to do that, I thought, now I have a film because I was very lost, shooting for so many years, and I thought, I need something more powerful. So it was, I asked my family, I'm gonna record this for the film. But they were so sick of, the, of me and of the camera, they say, okay, do whatever you want, you know? So, um, yes, it was, it was tough to take decisions in the editing room because I was two years doing the editing and so many times I thought, should I put this on the film? It's too, it's too personal to put your own family like with all these matters. It's too much. But I think at the end, all expression in, is to expression es sanadora. Any kind of expression heals you. It's healing, no? Yeah. You say, yeah. Every 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 expression is 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 healing, no? Uh, so through arts, it's a very good of, that's why many people that is sick or doesn't feel well or has mental problems or whatever, they say, do theater, paint, uh, write, do something with about an artistic thing that is healing you. So I think that the film, it was like a cathartic thing for the family. It was good for the family, even if it shows dark part of the family. But did you find that um, it caused friction, like with your siblings? Were they upset about some of the things that you included? Was no. there any talk about you, you can't use that? Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes they, they were afraid, a little afraid, some, some of them. But my mother, she has a lot of power on the family, as you can see. Yes. So she was like, the film must be done, you know? And I mean, she, doesn't, she, didn't, she didn't say it like that because she's... I, I think it's very interesting what the character says and what the characters really think. And my mother, she was always complaining about the film, mm -hmm. but you can tell she loves yeah. to be part of it, yeah. you know? So that's, I think it's interesting when you are playing a character is, what you, what the character says, what is written for the script writer on the paper, and what you really think. And that's important for an actor also to know these two uh, linea de pensamiento. Yeah, um, line of thought. Yeah. Any, more, um, any other interesting questions? Even if it's not interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it will be. <laughs> because the answer is, is completely stupid, so. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know, like, how, uh, how did you go from thinking it's going to be a bigger project to a 14-year uh, project? Like, 
like, how did you do that? <laughs> I mean, to, to go from two years to 14 years, and how did you know when to stop, or you were tired of it, or like, can you talk about that? Yes, yes. Um, I, I really don't know. I, I'm, I'm really, I, I, I really, I'm scared when I think about it, really. I, I wouldn't do it again. It's, it's, it's too much. I 14 years shooting your mother? Are you insane or what? I mean, do you have like some kind of uh, uh, complejo de Oedipo? Yeah. Oedipus <laughs> complex. Edip or something like that. And I was, I was shooting, I was lost, completely lost. But I, I knew there was something that I have to, that it was gonna be good. I knew that it was gonna be a hit. I knew that something it was gonna be like completely different than what it was made before. And actually, I really believe that there is not many documentaries in the whole world that are comedy. Very, very little ones. You just have to look at the ones you're competing with here at the Hong Kong International Film Festival, right? Many of them are about migration, about... Uh, yeah, migration. maybe they're great, but... but uh, even a lot better than mine, but this one is a comedy, so it's kind of like really something very weird, real. So, um, I was saying that, that yeah, I was, I was completely lost, uh, but I knew that something was, it was good. So, um, at one moment, I was so lost that I went to my shrink to my therapist, you say therapist, right? I went to my therapist and I asked him, can we record the, the sessions? The sessions? Yeah, the sessions. Can, can we record the sessions? And he was like, well, I need it for my film. And so I record the sessions with the therapist and I was recording for a few days and I record different years thinking that maybe through the sessions I could do this structure of the film, like Woody Allen or something like that. And I, I, I did the editing with the, with, the, with the sessions, but I removed it because it was too, too fake. It was real, but it looks fake. It's funny, that film. But, and I don't know, it was some kind of like, a journey for me to make this film. I don't recommend you to make a film about your family because it's, it's too much, but I do recommend you to make, to, to shoot every, I, I told you before, but I'm sure your every mother, father, um, uh, aunt, cousin, grandfather has at least one funny story to tell. One. Think about it. Go t tomorrow, or when you see your mother, uh, is there anything that happened to you in your life that is funny, that is really something that blow your mind, or something that you realize something so important or something, or something happened to you, and record that. At the beginning, they're gonna be like, oh, don't, don't record to me like that. But, um, so, I don't know, I don't know why I did it, but, it was about, and also, also I, di I know why I did it too. It's because when you go to see your family, okay, Sundays, imagine you, I don't live with my parents since I was 18. So I go maybe once every once a month or they live in my same city. So, so now I go often because the movie and all that. But so when you go to see them, Sometimes it's kind of tough, you know? But if you go to see your mother and you take the camera and you are recording her, in, instead of listening what she's saying, that you don't give a shit about what she's talking about, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you <laughs> it's not like that hard, but sometimes it's like she repeats the same things once and once and again and again. So you are recording and you are Paying attention of the focus, the lighting, the framing, all that, you know? So three hours with your mother is like just pass like that because you are 
<laughs> if you like to record, I love recording. I really, I, I love to be with the camera and record and all that. So if you, you like that, it's great to record your own family. So that's another, another thing that I, I think I did it because of that. So. Yeah. Um, so, like 14 years is a lot of time. So I assume like when you decided this is it, this is the end, did you go through a, like a mourning process, you know, like you felt sad about no more recording my mom and, you know, visiting her like frequently to do this. Now it's done and I decided that this is it. Yeah, because, uh, well, actually I have big fights with the editors because we were uh, editing the film for two years. That is a lot because we have 400 400 hours of footage. Usually in a film you have 20, 30. In documentary you have more usually, but this is 400 that is, and the editor we have, me and the editor, the first editor, we have to watch 400 hours of home videos with your mother. It's like insane. It's like something that you don't wanna, I mean, it's like when you go to uh, uh, someone, a friend's house, and they want to show you the video of the wedding. It's like, no, please, I don't wanna <laughs> see that. You know, like one hour, two hours video of wedding. So uh, there was, so, but I continue recording. So every day, because I was my own, uh, I was his, I was the director, producer, but I also was the assistant, editing assistant, editor assistant. I didn't have the, uh, the money to, so I, I was my, his assistant as well. So I was his boss, but he was my boss. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I was um, with the little tapes, Every day I went first and I did the, um, I don't know how you say it in English, but to, to put the, 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 the tapes, everything ready. So every day I came with new tapes. And one day he, me gritó. He shouted at me. He shouted at me, like really mad, like, don't, stop recording. This is insane. You are sick. You are a hoarder of tapes, like your own mother, you know? And it was insane. So, uh, but there was one moment that after 74 cuts, that is quite a lot too, um, there was one moment that I, I saw the film and I thought, yeah, it's fine. I like it now. Because it was very difficult to make it work. It was so many stories. It was a story about, uh, there are so many things on the film, and it's a film, so a strange film. It's like a collage. So I work the film like a, like a mandala. Like a mandala? You know you what know a the mandala Tibetan is? mandalas? So in a mandala, you have like different, um, I, I, in a mandala, aparecen eh, diferentes aspectos y sus opuestos o sus complementarios. So in a mandala, there are different aspects appear at the same time as the opposing aspects. Entonces, eh, lo que traté de hacer con el guión fue en una pizarra dibujar los temas de la película. Está la muerte, está la guerra, está eh, el mono los hijos, entonces hay muchísimos temas, luego está, bueno, hay otros muchísimos temas de fondo, entonces buscaba que todo estuviera relacionado una cosa con otra. Okay. Y, Allow me to translate, ah, otherwise I'm going to lose the thread. Um, so basically what, um, what you tried to do was just put together all the themes of the film, like on a blackboard, and try to connect them in a way that they would make sense. So there was death, there was um, la muerte, uh, uh, está la death, enfermedad. war, illness, um, the kids, the monkey, the vertebra, the, vertebra. Yeah, the, the castle, the, 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 um, la, la ruina. Yeah, the, the economic crisis and the ruin. So, at the end, like, there's connections between death and the great-grandmother who was killed in the Civil War. 
and the vertebra from the great grandmother and los excesos and to the, the excesses the, the, the hoarder that is related to the war because it's a generation that they keep everything up, up plastic bags they they kept plastic bags because they are like treasures and that time there was no plastic yeah, but basically the, there's this running thing um, in the film where there's a lot of hoarding or the, keeping everything because you never know when it's going to come in handy. And uh, there was a lot of um, scarcity during the Civil War. And during the war there was no plastic. So there's this obsession with keeping plastic boxes because they might come in handy and uh, trying to keep everything just in case. Yeah, yeah, so so the thing is that everything is related in the script, and it was so difficult. It's like a Castillo de Naipes, the Cuartas. Yeah, it's like it's like a um, a card structure. So what happened? That if you remove one card, everything falls, and uh, it was so difficult the editing because it was like really really fragile, and that, that's why took so long to do it. And yeah, so this one moment that I thought I was getting sick, so I thought enough. Yeah, it works now. But now a TV wants to make a, a TV series with a oh, thing. Really? Yeah. With your mother? Yeah, with my mother. So wow, she's gonna love it's it. like now I don't know what to do <laughs> because <laughs> I'm sure she'll, ha she'll be very happy. I have 400 hours I could make it, but why not? But I, I, I'm thinking about making my first fiction film, I mean, my feature film, and I don't know, I don't know. Now my mom, she become like a star, you know? <laughs> and she's like, she's like, yeah, she's like, really, she's like, all the radios, uh, TVs, they call, they, in Spain, they call it from TVs, and they say, like, there's one very, many famous uh, shows, and they say, no, but only Julita, no, you don't, and they don't want me to go, they just want her to go <laughs> alone. So it's like, uh, she become like a, kind of like a star, but, um, so, it's, it, now it's, it's, I don't know if it's, how it's, it's gonna work, but, uh, it's gonna be fun, I guess. So. Any more comments or questions? Actually, I have, I have a question. Um, you talk about all the different running themes and how you relate them all. And for me, one, two themes that were present in the film, throughout the film, was death and food. Yeah. Your mom has got an obsession with food. She keeps talking about, I hardly eat anything but throughout the film, she's just munching her way through everything. You know, she's always eating. And that part when she's got this um, loaf of bread and she's fried eggs and fried sausages and something else on top and everything is like piled up. And then she puts the top on it. <laughs> and, um, it looks disgusting. Let me. <laughs> it looks a bit like. Well, I don't know. I mean, for some people, it might be attractive. Obviously, for her, it was. Yes, um, it? But there's, there's that. And then at the same time, she's just constantly talking about death. And there's this, this moment when food and death come together when she talks about the croquettes of Jose Antonio. Yes. <laughs> um, I don't know. They, maybe you should explain about. Well, it's, it's an obsession with food. And um, I, I think it's related as well with the war because when she was a little kid, she really, she suffered. Uh, she suffered because she didn't have something to eat during the war. So it's an obsession with the food, no? to, like to keep things in case there's another war. I mean, she doesn't think it's gonna be another war, but there's something hiding. And yes, and death and war. Let me, let me put you one scene. Well, I'm gonna put the, the breath in.
Uh, well, I don't know why I put this in, but I guess... Uh, when, she, when she's talking to him and, and she's referring to herself as food. as food, let me say, I'm not tasty. Yeah. I'm not delicious. Uh, I'm just a, a sack of lard. Yes. She, she, she talks always in terms of food. And, and then there's one moment, that one scene, when she's talking about this recurring uh, dream that she has where she's making croquettes out of a person. <laughs> she's using someone's flesh to yeah. make croquettes. Yeah, she, <laughs> she has this, I think for her, food is like her lover. Yes. You know? Because she says that the, the guy was really handsome. And yeah. then she dreams that she's making croquettes out of him. Yeah, food is like, it's like she's, she's with my father for 54 years, but she has a lover that is the food, you know? And, and I would also like to ask, uh, coming back to the structure of the film, there are quite a few moments in which you make a montage of pictures, right? Like from um, the childhood to the adolescence to the... And I wanted to ask because when I was watching that, those parts in which you see the progress in the family from the early ages to the older ages, I think it is perhaps one of the elements that more made me identify with the film. Because apart from being a film uh, that is, of course, with such a great character, it's interesting in itself. But it also, the way in which you identify with a story, I think it is part of how you connect with the story. I think those moments in which you show the pictures, which we all have, no? We all have those pictures in the swimming pool or in the... It touches me because suddenly I remember I go from your pictures to my pictures, right? Were you aware of that? Uh, did you edit it or did you... Um, were you aware of that possible effect? Well, I think it's very important to... Well, it's, it's very obvious what I'm going to say, but uh, if you want to connect with the audience, first you have to sembrar. You have to harvest. Para luego recoger. Yeah, you have to um, sow in order to reap. In other words, how we could say that? Um, to feed, to... Yeah, basically to, to plant the seed so that you can collect the harvest afterwards. So how you plant the seed? At the beginning of the film, you have to take care of, like, to sow the most beautiful lighting, um, marvelous uh, of the character. Like imagine, it's like a, a romantic comedy. You have guy meet, meet uh, uh, man meet woman, uh, they fall in love, and they uh, uh, guy lost woman, and then at the end they get back together. No, that's like the most usual romantic comedy. So at the beginning of the film, when you say guy, uh, men or woman meet guy and they fall in love, you have to see, to sit, you have to really take care to make something really explosive, like something really love has to be amazing love, has to be like beautiful, the way they kiss, the way they look at each other, the way they dance, the way they are, you, you are watching the film like, wow, I want these guys to be together forever. Like, this is really love, this is real love. So, when they uh, se separan, when they, yeah, when they separate, when they separate, you are going to feel sorry and you want them back, be back together, no? So, it's something similar here, you, in every film, I think. If you really want the audience to connect, you need to to take care of that moment. And that moment is, uh, is about when she saw the pictures of when she was a, a kid, no? And we can put that moment if you want. Or not, I don't know, but. Well, there is a bunch of moments that. Yeah. Here, there's some. There, no?
So I, I didn't want to make, like many documentaries, they use pictures, like they scan the picture, and but so looks very well. And now many people, many many people are using this effect that separates the picture from the behind the background. But I wanted to do something very home video, like with a camera, like very handmade camera. And even with those uh, technical characteristics, your work manages to be selected to some of the most important film festivals in the world. No? With those technical, I mean, having made uh, the film with this camera, no? when you know that in film festivals many times they look at the 35 millimeters and the, right? Well, you, I think that the most important thing in film is the sound. You have to have a good, very good sound. I think that one of the things that Dogma, Dogma 95, 95 um, demonstro, well, what it demonstrated, demonstrated, is that you can have a city image. Actually, they shoot it with mini DV as well. Doesn't matter, but the sound has to be good. You have to understand very well the dialogues, everything. So if you make anything uh, like documentaries or with any kind of camera, don't worry about this, the, the, if the story is powerful, but the sound it has to be important. And that sound, the structure, your film, I had the impression many times that sound helped me understand the dynamics. When you change dynamics, I mean, there are moments when it is very obvious, but uh, I, I think that the sound helps a lot to guide the viewer as well through changes. No? Yes. Um, yeah, uh, there is uh, there is a work after after the shooting because I made the I didn't have any any crew I made everything myself alone with a a mic a good mic but everything I made I made it myself so afterwards in post productions we work a lot for the mm -hmm. ambience and all that and I don't know if I would like to if you want to see any other scene. Yes. Want to wrap up? Yeah. We will have the any time. Any other further questions or comments? That's your chance, uh, Giovanna. I, I just want to make a comment that there's a scene that I really like. is your mom sitting with her grandchildren, like a baby next to her, and then they're eating together. Ah, yes. Yeah, and then I really like it is because I think the whole film is to not celebrate your mom's life or stories, but she talks about death like in a very funny way or like she doesn't really care. And then I always think that old people, when they get older, they're like children again. So I really like that scene because it's like a contrast, but in the same moment, like the baby and your mom, they kind of kind look, of. yeah. yeah. Like yes, I think it's, 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 it's really nice what you're saying because I, I believe in that. I believe that there is one moment when, when that is sad, but it's beautiful at the same time. That when your parents, they get old, it's sad when you, they get old, but also it's beautiful because it's like they, Suddenly they become like your children, no? And it's a really beautiful moment in life. And it's sad that thanks to the film, I, I really think I connect with that part of them. And I, I see for a friend of mine that they miss that moment of, of their lives. It's like when you have a kid and they say, oh, you know, the, my kid suddenly is Seven years old. I, I miss that part. I it grow up so fast. So there is one moment with your parents that that they become old. That is beautiful too. But again, it's like you go to see your parents and you they tell. Sometimes you have. I don't know if it happens to you that someone tells you like, oh how fun how fun is your mother, or how, and you say. 
What? Funny, I really think so. You, it's funny, my mother say, oh yes, it's amazing, and they want to stay with her. So that's what happened to me. I, I realized that she was very funny and very uh, interesting and very through the film. But I'm just saying this to be aware of that. And I, I think the good thing about the film is that many people, when they see the film, they suddenly they call their mothers or their parents after when they finish the scene. And I think that's beautiful. Yeah. I'm going to put a scene for you. This is a scene that <laughs> well, so uh, I, I, I want you to see this scene because there are like few things at the beginning of the film that are very funny. So that's the thing I was telling before about um, sembrar, about uh, about to to put the best positive things, funny things, you want to continue watching that character, you know, you want to, because you, there's something that connects you in a, in a way. So after when the character suffer, you want, you need the character to be at, like, at the beginning, you know? So, so at the end, the structure is very like a future film. And also, it's the characters in the film works like like um, like a, the other characters. They work like a coro, no? So I'm going to put you this chorus. like a chorus, like hey. a Greek. I realized that my mom she has a bone of his grandmother, my great grandmother. And I cannot understand why they keep one bone, you know? They found her death in the Civil War. After two, two or three years later, they took all the body to the cemetery, but they, keep, they kept one bone in a little box, and the bone is lost. So now I, I, I ask my brothers to help me to find the bone, and this is the scene. Tratas una bueno, fosa para enterrar en un cementerio, ¿cómo te quedas con huesos? Ah, porque te, porque te apetece quedártelos. That the scene that you can see the whole family searching for the vertebra. And so that's, that's important to do, to have this, uh, this energy of um, something that you, you like to see, you know, uh, through the comedy, through the humor, so. Very interesting. Any other comment or question? Here we have one. Hello, uh, just in that clip I noticed that, I mean, no one, no one there seemed to be laughing. Excuse um, me? So no one, uh, when you were filming it, like no one in the room is laughing. I mean, it's hilarious watching it now. But ah, when, yeah. when you were in the room, it didn't seem funny. Is that? Yeah. You mean like the, 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 the characters? Yeah. So when, when you're actually there in the room, like no, no one's laughing. Yeah. It, did it become funny while, while you were editing it? No, because it, they, was, they were sick of me. <laughs> they, they, I was like, OK, let's going to record the help me. It was actually, they were actually help me helping me to, to search for, but at the end it's more important because the searching for the vertebra of my grand, grandma, great grandmother is an excuse, excuse no? An excuse, yes. It's an excuse to talk about hoarding, war, death, mm -hmm. uh, obesity, uh, illness, love, uh, between them, because there is also the love story between my parents. There are many themes, and they they were like I, I think it's when when um, they they are they are really suffering a little bit. So it's good for 
many uh, some directors they they punch actors to suffer a little bit so they are more funny later on the screen because it's more funny when you see people that is my mother there is like suffering because my all my brothers are saying like throw this man why do you want all these umbrellas you have 30 umbrellas throw you only need two or three throw so she's suffering like how is she gonna throw so it's kind of like a trick there is a moment in the film which I copied literally because I think it resonates very much with also with Asian religions, no? that you say, lo material te agarra lo prosaico y la ausencia de cosas te eleva lo espiritual. Can you translate that? Lo material te agarra a lo prosaico. Material things um, stick you or um, relate you to the prosaic. Y la ausencia de cosas te eleva a lo espiritual. And the absence of things elevates you to the spiritual world. Yeah, something like I was trying to convince my mother to, re to, talk, to talk about that, about that that is so true, that if you collect so many things, it's like your life is going to be, I mean, it's a, a way of freedom is to have very le little things, no? Many less things, you know. Very Buddhist, no? Yes, I'm. I'm very real. I think. So, so it's funny the way she she answer about all these matters, no? And um, so. So being here in Asia, I I dare to ask, how do you feel about this theme? In the in the film, no, because that's something that in Hong Kong or in Asia. Did you? It's funny because uh, uh, all the like, the, in Asia, there are so many, especially in China, no, but India as well, and um, but China, mo that the, uh, the, they made so many u useless things, cosas. Uh, like many useless gadgets. No, like I mean, all, all all over the world, you can go to stores that they sell like things that decorate tin and yeah, uh, you know, things that really that that's, are so unnecessary yeah. because they're and 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 it's from Asia that is supposed to be like supposed to be. I don't know how to explain it. Uh, to have a connection very deep with something more deep, something more less uh, prosaico. No? Yeah. yeah, basically, um, <laughs> <laughs> what, what he's talking about is the, this idea that in Asia there's this aspiration towards the more spiritual things and to have less possessions. But at the same time, Asia is like the birthplace, the cradle of the useless gadget. You know how you go to the um, shops? In Spain, we call them the one euro shops. And you find all sorts of use useless things, you know, something that's going to help you to hold your spoon in the right place. Like you need something special to hold your spoon. And it's there. And obviously, people buy it, because otherwise, they wouldn't make it. It's very so cheap. Yeah, and it's, and it's dirt cheap. So you've got this, this mixture of the more spiritual world, but at the same time, the really consumerist world um, together, which is kind of um, contradictory. Yeah, it's very contradictory. Was that right? Yes. One more question <laughs> or comment? We have one more question or comment? One final one? If not, I will tell you that you can watch the film uh, it's song and in, in the film festival tomorrow ah. and the day after and 20, tomorrow it's 29, 29, right? yeah, yeah, 29 and 31st. Okay. So if you want to see it. So Thursday and Saturday. Yes. Okay. Yes. If um, you want to see it. I think the time is uh, 7.15 tomorrow and 9.45 on the 31st. Perfect, yeah. If you haven't watched it, I definitely, definitely encourage you to do it because you've just seen a few 
excerpts and it is just hilarious. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Nice. Absolutely fantastic. And we wish you all the success with Thank the you. with the competition. We will know in the gala awards, right? Uh, awards so gala. Uh, we will know whether he is the winner or not. And Thank you so much for this uh, sharing session, uh, so enlightening and inspiring. Um, so we are very happy to, to have spent this time with you. Thank you Thank very much. Thank you so much. much for being here and listening to me all this time. Thank you very much.